Hey everyone and welcome to another XIM tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create a config for a game that doesn't have any XIM support. Since it is by all means not an easy task, I will show you everything you need to know to get really good results. Now the first thing you should do is to expand the options in the top right of your XIM manager and click on global settings. Here you have to set your polling rate to 500Hz. This is very important since you need to have really good micro movements when dialing in the dead zone later. Once your config is done, you can of course switch back to 1000Hz. But for the config creation process, you should only use 500Hz. Also, your mouse should at least run on 3000 dpi or more to prevent mouse stutter. But don't use too much dpi since that can have a negative effect on your testing results. Now once you change the polling rate, you can hit the save button in the bottom right. After that, restart your XIM so the polling rate changes will become active. Also, check your in-game settings to make sure that your controller sensitivity is set to maximum. If your game offers a dead zone setting, then it's best to keep it on default. Next, you should head into the game library of your XIM manager. Expand the options in the top right again and click on New. You will now have to find a game config with a dead zone shape that roughly matches the shape of the game you want to play. This may sound time consuming, but it really isn't, but more about that later. Now, since you obviously don't know the dead zone shape, you will have to do some testing. Load a game config of your choice and start to make circular mouse movements at medium speed. While you do that, pay attention to the crosshair in the game. The movement in the game should also look like a circle. Also, the movement has to be smooth, there should be no skipping or bouncing. If your mouse movements don't appear to be circular but elliptical, then that's no problem, you can fix that later. Now here are some tips to cut down the number of configs you have to try. First, research which game studio created your game. Maybe the XIM already supports one of the other games. In that case, you should try that config first. There is a high chance that your game uses a similar engine and look mechanic. Another thing you can do is to use the generic config templates. You can find those by scrolling all the way down to the bottom. As you can see, there are currently 5 generic configs. Generic configs are basically a blueprint of a config. Each config uses a different dead zone shape and together they cover all of the common dead zone shapes that games are using nowadays. So there's a good chance that one of these configs will give you really good results. The alpha config for example uses a circular dead zone. I will use a generic config since the developer of the game I want to play hasn't released any other game. After testing all generic configs, I went with the alpha config. The mouse movements were actually quite acceptable, although I wouldn't rate them as awesome. Once you found a config with acceptable circular and smooth mouse movements, you have to dial in the dead zone. For that, you must set the XIM sensitivity to 1.0. Also, expand the advanced settings right below and verify that your synchronization is set to default. You can later change it to your favorite synchronization again, but for dialing in the dead zone you should use default. Now move your mouse slowly to the side while continuously increasing the boost value in your XIM manager. Go with larger boost steps in the beginning until your crosshair in the game starts to move. Once you found a value that results in an in-game movement, reduce the boost value again. You want to find the lowest boost value that still results in an in-game movement. If you watched my boost tutorial video, then you know that boost will allow you to inflate the dead zone. After some tests, a value of 925 worked really well for me. You might have to use a much higher or lower value, since every game is different. Once you dialed in the dead zone, you can change the XIM sensitivity to a normal value. I will go with 20. With that value, my in-game sensitivity feels really good. Also, if you want to change your synchronization, then you should do that now. After that, you have to dial in the X and Y ratio. For that, you will do circular mouse movements on the mouse pad again. If the crosshair in the game follows an elliptical shape, then adjust the X and Y ratio to turn it into a perfect circular shape. You can also make diagonal movements and check if the angle you draw with the mouse on the mouse pad matches the movement angle of your crosshair in the game. A value of above 1 will make your vertical sensitivity faster and a value of below 1 will increase the horizontal sensitivity. Also, it is very important that you move your mouse at a consistent speed while doing this. Don't change the speed at which you move your mouse. Slow mouse movements are usually the best. After some tests, I have settled with a ratio of 0 0.85. The next thing you have to do is to click on the Ballistic Curve Generator. If you experience mouse acceleration in the game, then you can remove it with a curve. To measure acceleration, it is best to search for several fixed points in the game, which are all on a horizontal line. 
You can now move between those points at different speeds and check if the required distance on your mouse pad always stays the same. If you do not know how to use the Ballistic Curve Generator to achieve this, then definitely watch my Ballistic Curve tutorial. In that video I explain everything you need to know to pull this off. Once the acceleration is gone, you can add other advanced settings such as smoothing or steady aim. They are all optional though. I will add a little bit of smoothing to counter the minimal crosshair skipping that I have in the game. A value of 3 seems to be perfect. I will not use any other advanced settings since none of them are really necessary. They are mainly for fine tuning certain aiming aspects and will not have a huge influence. You can now do your button bindings at the bottom. To shorten the video I will not do that now. If your game also has an aimed on sides mode then you can swipe one more time to the right. In a generic config you will have to swipe twice. Since my config is a generic one, I have to swipe twice and activate a subconfig. I can do that by pressing the enable button. After that, bind your preferred aimed on sights button as the activation key. I will use the right mouse button for that. The following steps will now be identical to the ones in your hip configuration. First set the sensitivity to 1 again and dial in the boost value. After that adjust the x and y ratio. At last you can remove the acceleration with a ballistic curve. I will not show this now, but the procedure is exactly the same as before. Once you have adjusted everything, your config is complete. You can click on the save button in the top left and exit your new configuration. If you have any questions about your Xim or about this tutorial, just ask in the comments down below. Guys, if you like this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. And for the crazy guys out there, you can even become a channel member now. I'd really really appreciate that. Plus you also get a few extra benefits for becoming a channel member. Also, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials and don't forget to post your own suggestions in the comments down below. But that's about it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.